Hello and welcome to the second video on bike gearing. Please view my first video on bike gearing which is on my YouTube channel before starting this one. This video is going to move from uh, very basics to uh, intermediate to advanced uh, fairly quickly. So you need the introduction from the first video to help you through with this one. It'll give you some of the, it'll lay, well it'll lay some of the groundwork so that uh, you'll understand this video much easier after watching the first one. Bicycle gearing, as confusing as it is for most people, is, uh, is very important if you want to travel greater distances at greater speeds and with less effort. Gearing allows you to choose a gear that matches the terrain and matches your pedaling style. It also lets you choose gears for fitness when you want to train. Uh, it just gives you a very wide range of options so that cycling is more fun. So without uh, making the single speeders mad, I'll just talk about them for a second here. Uh, here's a picture of a bike with one gear. You might say, hey, that's for me. I don't have to figure out gears anymore. But um, unfortunately, riding a bike like this requires a great deal of strength, skill, and uh, a lot of good genetics, too. Uh, you only get one gear, so you pick that one gear out very carefully, and then that's the gear you ride for the rest of the day. Now, the only way to change speeds on this bike is to actually just pedal slower or faster. And when you want to climb hills, you will not be able to shift down into easier gears. You will have to crank the gear that's, and, if, and the gear you choose is usually a mid-range gear, you will have to uh, crank very hard up a hill and it will take uh, a very fit person to do this. Um, even though I'm fit, I can't ride a bike like this up 18% uh, grade because it would just simply destroy my knees and I would be uh, all finished with cycling. So these bikes, though simple, are not the best choice for beginners and uh, for anybody who really wants to ride over great distances very fast. So we're going to start again with the very basics here of the gearing. And there's basically just uh, two sets of gears. We have the front and the back. Now I'm going to be very specific from here on out in the video and I will be naming these gears uh, exactly the, uh, to the exact description of what they should be. There's a lot of nicknames for them, like um, you know, gears and and sprockets and whatever. But to be very accurate, which we need to be in this video, I'm going to refer to these as the most descriptive term. So on the front, we have the crank set, and that's the entire assembly. And the crank set is composed in this photo of three gears, or more accurately, chain rings. So we have three chain rings on this crank set. So when I'm referring to chain rings, I will refer to the front only. On the rear, we have a collection of cogs and they can be any number from uh, as few as seven or as many as 11. In this video, we'll be dealing with eight. So we have eight cogs and the entire assembly is called a cassette. So we want to be very clear on this, on this terminology. So when I'm referring to chain rings, it's the front gears. When I'm referring to cogs, it's the rear or the cassette. Now each one of these chain rings and cogs have different numbers of teeth and that's how we get the different gear ratios or that's how we get the different gear inches. On the front crank set, we will be using a three chain ring setup or a, what's called a triple crank set. And that's what we'll be using in this video to illustrate how to shift. Now this particular one has, if you count the number of teeth, 
it will show up as the small one. That's the one that's closest to the uh, to the uh, down tube of the bike. That's the smallest chain ring. And, it, and if you count them all up, they have 22 teeth. The middle one has 32 teeth, and the large one has 42 teeth. Now, as the teeth uh, numbers go up, the size of the chain ring gets bigger. But the teeth are all the same size. Now, on the rear, we have in this photo eight cogs. Each one of these cogs are numbered, which makes the smallest cog 11 teeth and the largest one 34, and all the ones in between. Now, the way the cogs are spaced are uh, uh, determine how big a jumps you're going to have between each shift. Now the combination of these two is what gives us all the gears and all the gear ranges. Now this is called an eight-speed setup because there are eight gears on the rear but because we have because there's a triple chain ring this is called a 24-speed gearing setup. If there is only two chain rings on the front, and that's called a double crank set, there would be only uh, 16 gears on this bike. But this is the gearing we'll be using for the rest of the video, and it's a 24 speed setup. Eight cogs on the rear, three chain rings on the front, eight times three equals 24. This type of gearing is used on lots of different bikes. This is a racing bike, but it's got um, it's got triple chain rings and uh, a wide range cassette. So it's even though it has race, it's a racing frame. It has wide range gearing, so you can somewhat call this a sport bike or something like that. But uh, you can call it anything you want. But it's uh, again this this triple crank set and uh, eight cog setting is typical for a lot of the bikes. This is a comfort bike. It has three chain rings up front and uh, eight in the rear. This is a typical mountain bike setup. Nearly every mountain bike has a triple crank set up front and uh, well, various various cogs in the rear. This setup here is a is the same as what we're using today, and that's a triple crank set with three chain rings up front and a eight-speed cassette on the rear and hybrids use the uh, can use the same setup too this is another triple crank and uh, nine speed on the rear so let's review this one more time before we get into this video from here on out when I'm talking about chain rings I am talking about the gears on the front crank set and when I'm talking cogs I am talking the uh, individual cogs or gears on the cassette. Then I'll be referring to teeth numbers and that will be very specific to which gear on the cassette or which gear on the chain ring I am referring to. Now once you're done with this video you'll be able to communicate just like a pro does. When pros communicate their gears they will use three you can they will use three different descriptions to provide a very accurate description of their power output and uh, and their sp and somewhat their speed to just tell someone how fast you're going does is isn't really relative to anything because uh, the variables haven't been taken into effect so when a pro uh, wants to tell you what kind of uh, train they were riding and uh, how fast they were going. You could say, well, I was doing uh, I was doing my best time trial. I was in A, and now I'm going to describe. I was in a 42.11 spinning on the cranks at 90 RPM with a heart rate of 75%. So a pro is going to describe this particular part of his terrain as the gearing, which in this case is the highest gear on his bike, a 4211, and the RPMs on the crank, 
at 90 RPM and the heart rate, which indicates how hard he was working to turn these gears at this RPM at 75% of maximum. If you want to learn more about heart rate and maximums, uh, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of videos to explain that. I don't want to go into that right now. So this racer has just explained to me that he was in the uh, he was in a very high gear, which is in this case it was 99 inches, the combination of 42 by 11, at 90 RPMs means he's doing 27 miles an hour, and at 75% heart rate means he's either extremely fit, or he had a tailwind, or he was going downhill. To achieve 27 miles an hour is a is a, on level ground without a tailwind is a very high level of fitness. So again, let's uh, let's let's go back to the first part of this, and that's he was turning a 4211. That's what I'm describing here, and the 42 is the large chainring with 42 teeth. And the 11 is the smallest cog on the rear at 11, relaying uh, a description of which gear you were in. You always use the front crank set and chain rings first, and then the rear cog teeth second. So whenever you describe what gear you're in, you always go to the crank set first and then the cassette second. So in this case, it's 4211. So now that we understand the number of teeth and, uh, and the chain rings and the cogs, let's move on to gear inches. As you can see in this animation, the bike is traveling. What if you if you uh, observe the, the crank set and watch the pedal go around? It's making one complete turn. This complete turn will take you a specified amount of distance according to which gear you are in. So we have the starting distance, and we have the ending distance, and then we have the measurement in inches of how far the bike traveled in one rotation of the crank. This distance is called gear inches and it depends on three factors which gear you are in on the front crank set which gear you are in on the cassette and the size of the wheel we're not going to get into the size of the wheel too much but here we have a typical 700 C wheel which is one of the largest you can get and if this bike has the same gearing as this bike with 20 inch wheels, the gearing on the 20 inch wheel will be much lower. Because the wheel is smaller, it won't travel the same amount of distance. Now this may add a lot of confusion, but it's not that important to this video. So I'm only introducing it so that uh, you understand that wheel size makes, makes a difference in gearing but uh, we won't be referring to that for the rest of this video. Now as I move into this first slide with the, with the gear chart, we are now going to be connecting what we learned in chain rings and cogs. And we're going to add one more variable, and that's the RPM, or your crank speed or cadence. From now on, I'm going to be referring to this as cadence. And that is how many rotations per minute the crank is doing. Uh, we're including cadence in this, in this um, gear selection video because cadence uh, also determines speed as well as the gear. So on this chart, it is color-coded in the uh, inches of travel chart 
where you see the red at 22, 32, 42, it is referring to the chain rings. And you can see the red crank set on the little bike illustration. And then down the left side is the cogs, or blue, as it's illustrated in the little bike illustration, blue. So the 11 through 34 down the side in blue is the cogs, and the red across the top is the chain rings. Now as we connect these on the chart, we are getting the actual gear inches. And if you remember, the gear inches is how far the bike travels in one rotation of the crank. So if we take, for an example, in this one, we are taking, uh, if you look at the gear underneath the bike, the gear is called a 32 by 30. And if you remember, the 32 is red, so it's referring to the crank or and the chain ring. <clears throat> and remember, we always refer to the chain ring first and the cog second when describing gears. So this is a 3230. Now, if we select this gear, you can see it on the chart. You take the 32, go down to the 30, and you come up with 28 inches. That's how far the bike is traveling in one rotation of the crank. Now, if you your cadence is 90 RPM. With this gear combination, you will be traveling at 8 miles per hour. So this is fairly slow. You would be going into a strong hind wind or climbing a fairly steep hill to be going this slow. You'd still have a fairly good RPM going at 90, but uh, you're still only going 8 miles an hour. So maybe this gear is a little too easy and you would want to either shift up or if it was too hard because you're on a hill you would shift down. But that is an example, this is an example of the gear charts we're going to be using as we go through shifting. So we have three charts here that will be the same in the same place. We have the inches of travel, that chart doesn't change. We have the speed which will change as we change gears and we have the gear selection which will change as we ch change different selections. So we do have all kinds of resistance when we're on the bike and the gears are going to help us. So I have the uh, I have the wind and air coming at you. There's always wind resistance. Even if there's no wind, you still have to push air. If you're going 10 miles an hour in, a, in zero wind, you're still pushing 10 miles an hour worth of air. Now, of course, air density changes with elevation, so the, uh, the resistance varies with elevation. So I think now we are ready to go for a ride and do some shifting. So let's start on some level terrain and... Uh, select some gears. Now with level terrain we're going to uh, start with a middle chain ring. The middle chain ring is our average uh, level terrain gear range. So as we're in the middle chain ring which is the 32 teeth we will shift the rear so that we achieve our 80 to 100 RPM cadence at a comfortable level. So here we are on the first gear chart and we have selected a gear of 32 by 18 or a 32 18. So that means we're in the middle chain ring 32 we are on the 18 tooth cog on the cassette on the rear, which, are, which is giving us a 46 inches per single revolution of the crank. And at 90 RPM, we are now traveling at 12 miles an hour. Now as conditions change, maybe we, uh, maybe we catch a, a little bit of a tailwind. So now we're going to shift. We're going to shift the rear to a, 
or now our gear selection is a 3213. We were riding a 3218 at 46 gear inches. Now we have shifted to a 32 by 13. And if you look on the chart, 32 by 13 equals 64 gear inches. So with 64 gear inches and a 90 RPM crank speed, we've moved up to 17 miles an hour. Now as conditions change again, maybe we have a slight downhill with our tailwind now. So now we really want to go fast. So now we've, we're going to get out of our middle chain ring, our level ground or average gear range, and we're going to go to our high gear range on the crank set. So we're choosing a 42 to two, 42 tooth chain ring by 13 tooth cog on the cassette. So now we're, if you look on a chart, you move over the 42 and the 13, we're way up into the 84 gear inches or 84 inches of travel of bike for every revolution of the crank. And you compare that to where we were before at 28 inches. So you can see how many more inches we are traveling in this higher gear. And at 90 RPMs, we are now moving along at 22 miles an hour, which is very fast for a bike. For a rec rider, going 22 miles an hour would be a very cool speed. So let's go further and see what happens. OK, we must have more tailwind, because now we are going to a 4211. As the teeth get smaller and smaller on the rear. That's our blue uh, side of the chart. This is the confusing part. As the uh, teeth get smaller on the rear, the gear inches go up. As the teeth get smaller on the front, the gear inches go down. You can see this on the chart. The, uh, the 2211 is 52 gear inches. And the 4211 is 99 gear inches. So now we're going really fast. We are in a 4211, which is the highest gear of the bike. We can't go any uh, higher than this. That's our 99 gear inches. Every revolution of the pedal gives us 99 inches. And we are moving at 27 miles an hour with a 90 RPM cadence. So here we are dealing with two gears and a cadence. And we are determining speed through this. So that's our mid-range or high mid-range to high range gear selection. Now, as the, uh, since we're on level ground, the, uh, the wind, either as headwind or tailwind, was influencing our gear selection. So now let's move on to a, we're going to move our terrain, and we are going to go climbing the foothills and mountain terrain. So let's do some climbing and shifting. So here we are in our first our first part of the hill. Now we're only going four miles an hour, but we're we're still cranking that 90 RPM. Throughout this entire video, our cadence isn't going to change. Even though I uh, I would uh, encourage you to change your cadences on the road. You want to want to be in a high. You want to have a nice range of cadences from at least 80 to 100. Uh, the more you can get above 100 and feel comfortable, the the more tools you'll have in your arsenal so that uh, uh, your cycling becomes more enjoyable. So here we are traveling at four miles an hour at 90 RPM, where we just got finished with our tailwind before we were doing 90 RPM, but we were in a different gear and doing 27 miles an hour. So even though our cadence hasn't changed, our speed certainly has. We have dropped from 27 miles an hour down to 4 miles an hour 
mainly because we have a very steep hill and we are in the lowest gear of the bike. There's no more gears to go. We have gone as low as we can go. It's a 22 by 34. So if you look on the gear chart, the 22 in red and 34 in blue, and we have 17 gear inches. So we're only moving 17 inches for every rotation of the crank, where before we had just been doing 99 gear inches. So these, these two measurements, the 17 inches and the 99 inches, are, are, are the extremes on this bike. It's also, you can also uh, see how much uh, greater distance you're getting on each crank revolution in your cadence. Now this is what's called leverage. You are theoretically using the same amount of workload to go the same distance, but um, this is a this is theoretical. When it comes to, when it comes to mechanical engines and machines, this works out really well. For biological organisms like human beings, it's not as accurate. So it is leverage, and you are gaining a, a additional amount of leverage by using lower gears on the hill. But uh, because we are biological machines, there are other factors involved, um, such as muscle, the, the different kinds of muscle fiber, uh, the kind of genetics you were born with, as far as being more power or more endurance or somewhere in between. A lot of factors come in. So I don't deal with leverage very much. And I'm going to stop talking about it now. So we're back on our hill, and we must be on a very, very steep hill because we're in the lowest gear, going four miles an hour, and barely moving. So now on the next slide, we've uh, shifted to a smaller cog on the rear, and uh, now we're going a little faster. So we've either increased our heart rate and working harder on these same grade or the or the terrain changed. So in this case, let's say the terrain did not change and now we've uh, decided to go faster simply by pushing harder. So we've uh, upped our uh, maximum heart rate percentage to uh, to accommodate this faster six mile an hour speed and the higher gear. Now, of course, we can uh, we can increase speed by increasing cadence. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving that out so that we don't have so many variables to go over in this video. So in this video, we're going to be staying at 90 RPMs uh, throughout. OK, so on the next slide, our conditions have changed again. We have shifted now to a 32 34 on our hill. So we've shifted out of our smallest chain ring and we've gone to our middle chain ring now and we're at 34. So let's look at the gear inches difference between 2234 and the 3234. The 2234 was 17 gear inches and the 3234 was 25 gear inches. So there was a difference. As you can see on this chart, there are some numbers very close or the same as, as others. This is what's called the gear overlap. So as we go through these ranges in each of the chain rings up front, there are gear overlaps. Uh, let's see, one of the overlaps would be um, one we're very close, let's t do the 42 by 22, which is 50 gear inches, is equal to the 22 by 11, by only 2 inches. It's uh, fairly difficult to feel 2 inches of gear travel. So they are almost identical. And as you can see, there's, there's close ones all over the place. Uh, let's go to the 32 by 34. That gives us 25 gear inches, which is very close to the 22 by 22 gear at 26 
inches. They're only one inch apart. And you might say, well, yeah, we've got all these overlaps and gears, so what gear good is this? Well, again, let's, let's just stay in the mindset of gear ranges from the uh, crank set. We have a, the gear range that's 22 for, for climbing hills. We have a gear range of 32, which is our average uh, middle chain ring. And we have the gear range of the 42, in, 42 tooth chain ring, which is for going faster or, and tailwinds and downhills. So as you stay in within your range, you can see uh, how the gear inches change e more, uh, much more evenly than if when you skip around. So next we're going to start climbing in our 3230 gear. And if you look on the 32 uh, chart, going to be a 3230 or 28 gear inches at 90 rpm we are now going seven and a half miles an hour up our hill now as our hill levels out we start to shift some more here we're in a 3226 or 32 gear inches at eight and a half miles an hour and now we've shifted up again on our hill now we're in a 3218 which is 46 gear inches, and we've moved up to 12 miles an hour. So there are the, some typical shifting on hills. So in summary, our gear selection is called by the teeth number the front chain rings first and the cogs on the rear. So if you're going to call out a gear to your friends, you, you would say, oh, I'm in a 4215. And uh, they'll know what gear you're talking about. If you tell them what gear you're in from the indicators on the, on the shifters, it might just say three on the uh, front. And if it said four on the rear, it means nothing to anybody. Because there are so many different gear combinations, uh, the uh, actual numbers on the gear shift levers don't mean anything. So to be accurate, that's why we've been using the teeth number. And of course, you'd have to memorize all the all the teeth numbers on your on your cogs. And uh, some people do that. You don't have to. But again, for every revolution of the crank, you travel. A certain distance. This distance is in inches and it is related in the chart as gear inches. So again the gears are going to give you a uh, much greater speed, distance, and endurance if they are used properly. So I hope this uh, video has been a uh, been a help to you. It is certainly more technical than the first one, but it does give uh, more exacting reasons why you are shifting and why you're doing what you're doing when you're shifting. So better this should uh, increase your speed, endurance, and uh, and distance and make you a better cyclist. Thank you very much.